So I want to just touch a little bit on what I said last week because some of us was not here last week. So, so I posed to the congregation on last week is that we must understand who we are in the kingdom of God. We must know who we are in the kingdom of God. Now note, I did not say in the church. In the kingdom of God. So I said this. I said there are, last week, I said there are five questions. Five questions of life that must be answered and it will help us understand our relationship with the Lord. Question number one is, who am I? It speaks to our identity. Question number two is, where I am from? Which speaks to our heritage and our source of life. Question number three that needs an answer is, where, why am I here? It speaks to purpose. Question number four says, what can I do? That speaks to our potential, okay, our ability to fulfill purpose. And question number five, where am I going? That speaks to our destiny. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So on last week, I addressed the first two. Where am I from and where I am? Uh, where I, who am I and where am I from? The call is on us to be holy. You know? Be ye holy. For I am holy, thus said the Lord in Leviticus 19 and 2. And to do that, then we must yield ourselves to God. There's repentance. And as Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not only did we learn who we are, but also we learned where we were from. Okay? You're not from California. You're not from Ohio. You're not from Texas or, or Georgia or Illinois or Michigan or Washington. We are created from God. We were born, listen to me, we were born on purpose with a purpose. You with me? Mm. Man is the highlight of God's creation. God created man in his image and after his likeness. Second Timothy 1 and 2, I said on last week, said this, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works or to the things that we think we can do, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world begun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen to it. Given to us before the world begun. So God had us in mind and formed us long before you was a t twinkle in your parents' eye. Right. <laughs> but see, now knowing, knowing this, knowing this, that who I am and that I'm a creation of God, then I must not allow the world to consume me with the things of the world. Corinthians, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10 says this. Do not let any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. For we are complete Look at somebody and say complete. complete. We are complete in him. Notice that, y'all. We, we are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. That was last week. That was last week. In short, 
But today, I want to talk to you and address, again, understanding who we are in the kingdom as it relates to question number three and four. Why am I here? What's the purpose? And what can I do? Potential. Potential and purpose we're going to address today. Purpose is the original intent. Some, something one intent, intends to do intentionally toward a specific end. Everything that was created was created with a purpose. Say purpose. purpose. Everything that was created by God was created with a purpose. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 declares this. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. There's a season and a time to every purpose. In other words, God works according to his season and his timing and not yours. There is a time and a season for everything under the heavens. The purpose of a thing is only known by the one who created it. Y'all with me? Right. Okay. You are a product of God yeah. and your purpose was in his mind before you were created. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Our entire life can end up being a waste if we don't know who we are and if we don't know our purpose. If we don't know the purpose of a thing, I say all the time, we'll abuse it. The chair was created for you to sit in. The chair was not created for you to pick it up and hit somebody over the head. <laughs> The chair was not created for you to stand on. It was created for you to sit. Huh? Everything that was created was created for a purpose. Glory to God. If we do not know the purpose of this being, we'll abuse it. So many people on drugs, so many people on alcohol, and gluttony, and all kind of sexual immorality, only because we abuse this because we don't know the purpose of this human being. God created this to be holy and to serve him, but we don't know that purpose, and if we don't know that purpose, as I just said, we'll abuse Listen to me, the most powerful and greatest search of the human spirit is for personal purpose and meaning of life. Yeah, true. Right, right. Do you know why you are here? For God's purpose. See, we got we got our own way, y'all. We're gonna do what we want to do. We we it's just it's just in us because we were born in, in sin. And being born in sin, we carry out the will of the Father and Creator of sin. And He takes us down a path we don't want to go. But yet we get consumed in it and try to fight our way back out. When God simply said, Come unto me. Oh, ye that labor and are struggling to life, and I'll give you rest. The most powerful and greatest search of the human spirit is to know the meaning of life. Listen, now to Romans 8 and 28. It says this, 
And we know that all things, all things work together for good to them that love God. Catch it, catch it, catch it. To the ones that love God. I <laughs> get it? In working for those who love God and to those who carry out his purpose. Okay? But listen now, verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, whom he had knowledge of before it happened, he did predestinate or prepare us to be conformed to the image of the Son. <coughs> So whom he did foreknow, whom he already knew, already knew you okay, before you came into existence and prepared you for purpose. Prepared you for his purpose. <coughs> so it was knowledge with a purpose. Listen to me. It was knowledge with a purpose that never frustrated God. Sister Bonnie, it never frustrated God because God knew that you would be saved. God knew that along the line, somewhere, here, there, you're going to hear the gospel and it's going to prick your heart and you're going to be drawn towards him. So God was never frustrated with you because he knew in his own timing and for his purpose, you'll be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So it's the foreknowledge that ensures eventual repentance and belief because God knew Isaac long before Isaac came into existence. Now listen to me, y'all. Listen. Proverbs 19 and 21 in the NIV version says this. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. The word heart means mind. Many are the plans in a man's mind. In a man's mind, y'all hear me? All of, all of us got that, these great ideas, and they may not be a God idea, but we got these ideas. Many are the plans in a man's mind, but it's God's purpose that will prevail, that will come. To pass. Listen to it now. In the King James Version, it says this. It says, There are many devices in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's counsel, right. the counsel of the Lord, that still stands. Yeah. See, so no matter what happens in life, no matter what we deal with, no matter what we go through, yeah. the counsel of God, the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God always prevails. Listen, listen, because God said this. I didn't give this scripture to them, put on the screen, but let me then put it to you. Let, 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 scripture says this in Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. For well, he said it and shall he not do it? He spoke it and shall he not make it good? Then God holds God holds himself accountable to his own word. So then God said, I'm going to do this. And if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to bring it to pass. You can count on it. You can count on it. You can count on it. Worry about it. Worry about it. We will do it. Brother Otis may say, Pastor, I'm going to do this, and he'll forget about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what God said, you can rest assured. You can rest assured that when God said it, it's going to come to pass. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, Job 42 and 4 says this. I know that you can do all things. There's no purpose in you. Uh, 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 it says this. No purpose of yours can be defeated or can be thwarted. Okay? Job declared it. So look, look. I know you can do it. Anybody with me on this? Yeah, yeah. I know you can do all things. You know, you know that I can do, I can do all things. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing that can defeat God. Amen. Amen. 
Psalms 33, verse 10 and 11. The Lord forms the plans of the nation. He thwarts the purposes of the people. But the plans of the Lord stand firm. How long? But it says, forever. The purpose of his heart is through all generations. Glory to God. When God created us, when God created us, he designed us to fulfill his will and gave us certain qualities and characteristics that enable us to perform his will. All right, man. Hey, all right, good, 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 good. All right, that enabled us to perform his will in the birth. These abilities was given to us before birth. Your purpose, your abilities, and your outlook on life cannot be separated because your purpose determines how you will function. Okay, which is related, which is related to your potential, which is connected to your natural abilities. Y'all hear me on this? To remove your purpose would be to change who you are. Well, well. Because your purpose both informs and it reveals your nature and your responsibility. Everything you naturally have is necessary for you to fulfill your purpose. Your height, your race, your skin color, your language, your physical features, your intellectual capacity are all designed for your purpose. Some of you like to socialize with people, others like solitude. Some like to think with your mind, and there's others who like to work with your hand. Some who communicate with words got a lot to talk about and express their others who express themselves in various arts and forms. Okay, there's those who like to lead and others to follow. There's those who inspire others, and then there are those who manage. However, God chooses to design you in a particular way, it relates to your purpose. Take a minute and just look at your hand. Just look at, look at, look at your hand. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. Your hand has that fingerprint that's unique in and of itself. There is no two. Come on. There is no two. That's why when they take your fingerprint. <laughs> When the man calls you in and takes your fingerprints, or in some job places of employment, they get your fingerprints. And all they have to do is run it through whatever system they run it through and don't come up with your face. It's going to show you you because of the one feature that God created in your hand. Your fingerprint identifies who you are, yeah. and you cannot get away with it and say it ain't me. You are somebody. <laughs> it relates to your purpose. Your birth is evidence. Listen to me, y'all. Your birth is evidence that your purpose is necessary. Look at somebody say your purpose is necessary. Your birth. Your birth is evidence that your purpose is necessary. God has chosen you to fulfill his purpose, and he's chosen whom he will carry it out. Amazing. All right. I often think about my life as it was formed and created by God for a purpose because I had my own plans. And if I carried out my own plans, me and Sister Bonnie would be in the law 48. <laughs> but God had a purpose. That's why we're here today. Amen. God chooses who he will to carry out his purpose. When we surrender this to God, 
All right, then God uses you to carry out his purpose. Now, let me give you several examples. Let's look at Moses in the book of Exodus, chapter 3. And I'm just going to read verses 10 through 14. Now, my favorite movie, I got to go there. Favorite movie of all time came out in 1956. Four hours and 44 minutes long. I, I can tell you, I can tell you. The Ten Commandments. How many of y'all seen it? Y'all seen the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments right? it's, that's my greatest all-time movie. Okay? Because it gives some evidence of Scripture, then it gives some made-up stuff. But it's so good. It's good. <laughs> Moses was raised in the castle of Pharaoh. He was trained and developed and learned the Egyptian way of doing things. Had no idea of his heritage or his source of living. All he knew what went on in the palace of Pharaoh. He had the knowledge, he had the intellectual capabilities. He knew how to go in and out before Pharaoh, how to handle the business and affairs of Pharaoh. But God got a hold of it. Yeah, yeah. God got a hold of it. After he killed it, one of the Egyptian workers, after he killed him, and then from there he fled for his life and ended up in Midian, and in Midian he became a shepherd where things shifted in his life. Right. And while he was tending to the sheep, he looked up into a mountain and saw a uh, a, a bush that was burning on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now in the text, it says this in 3 and 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people of children, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Listen, he was saying, I'm unfit. I'm unfit for this call. I can't do this. I can see God says, nobody better than you. Listen, and God said, certainly I will be with you and this shall be a token unto you that I have sent you. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God, serve me upon this mountain. And Moses said, God, when I come unto the children of Israel and she say, and shall say unto them, God and your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is my name? And what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am. That I am. Mm, mm. I am who is. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent you. But now, when you take it a little bit further, because now Moses was given purpose for his existence. So he said this in Hebrews 11 and 25, after Moses received it and accepted the call that was on his life, he said this, he chose rather to suffer the affliction with his people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I'd rather fulfill the call that's on my life by God. Huh? We'd rather, anybody with me that rather fulfill the call of God on their life than to walk in sin. I don't care if it's for three days or 30 years. We'd rather serve God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I have not always been the preacher. I, That's right. I had a messed up life. Done some things that I'm not proud of. Ran from some people that was after me. Some of y'all shared my testimony with the things that I've done. But thanks be to the Lord. Because he revealed to me purpose. 
and he equipped me to fulfill his plan. Yeah, yeah. Glory, 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 glory to God. Let's look at David. In Acts chapter 13, verse 22 and 23. And when he had removed him, when he had removed Saul from being king of Israel, he raised up unto them David to be king, to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after what my own heart, which shall fulfill, which shall fulfill all of my will, that fulfill all of my purpose. So what he was saying, he was saying Saul didn't do it all. Saul got caught up in himself. And God said, I need to send somebody. So he moved Saul out of the way and raised up David. And when he raised up David, listen to it, he said, a man after my own heart. Man that I can look to, a man that I can depend on. Can God look to you? Can God depend on you to carry out his will? I can look to him say, because he will fulfill all of my will. He'll do what I say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you there? Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Let me, let me take it a little bit further because this, this is what's said about David in Psalms 89, 3 and 4. And God said, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne throughout all generations. Purpose and potential. Y'all, let me tell you something. If God calls you, he'll qualify you. Huh? If God calls you, he'll prepare you for the work. If God calls you, you don't have to say, who, me? You can say, yes, Lord, thy will be done. Woo. Thank you, Lord. One more, one more. One more. In Acts chapter 9, talk about Saul. In Acts chapter 9, okay, Saul had a petition that he would go and take out all the Christians. Take all of those. Take them out. Take them out. He had got permission. A letter was given to him. Say, yeah, you can go down to Damascus and take them all. Rest them all. The Bible said on the road to Damascus, he had an encounter. <laughs> See, the Lord know how to get you. <laughs> See, if you're not working the way God wants, there's a shift that will always happen in your life. Okay? There's a shift that will always happen in your life. And you'll say, oh, it must be God. That shift will stop you right in your track. You know, we've had, we had what I call SDE, some significant emotional events. Oh, yeah. That we have in our lives that stopped us right in our tracks. Anybody hear me? Oh, yeah. We've had we've had them that stopped us and made us catch our breath. And go, oh my God! That God has spoke to us and said, "I'm all I'm doing to do is just try to get your attention." That's all I want to do. And, and, and when 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 Saul when Saul was on that road. God got his attention and his life shifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? It shifted. Come on, come on. And the Lord spoke to him and said, said Look, Saul, what are you trying to do? Don't you know you cannot defeat something that is already victorious? Yeah, well. Why is it so hard for you to kick against the prey? It's something that's already in place and working. How are you going to make adjustments to that? What can you do? He said, Lord. Look, 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 let's read it, let's read it. Three and ten, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no. Acts 9, verse 5 and 6, and he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, who persecutes you. Is it hard for you to kick against the brick? And he trembled and started saying, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city, and it shall be told unto thee what you must do. His life was shifted, and purpose came into 
position. Yeah. He had the potential. Yeah. Yeah. He studied from the best. He knew the law. Yeah. He knew everything. He had, he, he had the letter of the law, but he wasn't a doer of the word. See, you see, so then it said, hey, you can have all the letter of the law you want. <laughs> you can know Genesis 1 and 1 all the way through to Revelation 22 and 21. You can get it all the way down. Okay? But if you don't know purpose, it means nothing. Okay? If you don't know what God has called you to, it means nothing. Okay? I'm going off script here for just, just a minute. Now that you, know. you see, because church folks has become more religious folks than relationship folks. So church folks look at the Bible as a religious book. And it's not, you hear what I'm saying? Not, say not. It's not a religious book. It's a book about a king. And the king family. It's a book about a king who created a family to worship him. I just want to deviate for a minute. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Keep, keep. Stay tuned. Now, that's, that's coming down. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming down. Bro. See, so when, 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 when Saul had his encounter with the Lord, Fulfilled his purpose. Then what happened was he became the preacher throughout all Asia Minor and then began to preach the gospel to the Jews oh, yeah. and to the Gentiles. More to the Gentiles than to the Jews. Okay, because the gospel was spread now then to all the known world. And when he stood before Agrippa, ah, yes. when he stood before Agrippa, this is what he said. He shared his testimony in Acts 26. Verses 16 through 18. He shared his testimony. He said, In his encounter with the Lord, and God spoke to him and said, Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which will appear unto you. Deliver these people from the Gentiles, to whom now I see you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light yeah, and yeah. from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Yeah. So Paul went okay, went from Damascus to Rome okay, from Rome to Thessalonica yeah, from yeah, Thessalonica yeah. to Galatia from Galatia to Corinth yeah. and from Corinth to Ephesus Okay. Went throughout all the known world preaching the kingdom of God. Yeah. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is made available to you right now. It's made available. Repent, he said. It's made available to you now. Luke 12 and 32, he says, this is my father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's my father's pleasure. My father's desire is God's desire to give unto you the kingdom. He give unto you the kingdom. Anybody want? Yeah. Is, there, is there anybody here? Anybody here that want to be part of the kingdom? Anybody, anybody here? That calls for that calls for a life change. That calls for a total life, a total life change. Paul committed the rest of his life serving God and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when he realized his time has come to an end, he said this to his servant Timothy, to his son Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 8. He said, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Good, because I've done everything that the Lord wanted me to do. Can I fulfill his purpose and plan for my life? He said, I fought a good fight. Yeah. I, I finished the course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me, and not to me only, but to everyone that loves his appearance. Is there anybody that's ready to celebrate Jesus? Is anybody ready to let him know that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? He is my Redeemer. He's my Savior. He's my great God. And beside him, there is none other. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. We seek. I want 
wanted to paint this picture for you to see through scripture uh, that we have purpose. But what comes with purpose is potential. Say potential. See, you see, potential is the ability to do something or something that can be developed. God created everything with potential. Mm -hmm. Touch it out. God created everything with potential. He places the seed of each thing. Listen to me. Listen to me. He placed the seed of each thing within itself. Genesis 1 and 12. And the earth brought forth grass. And the herb yielded seed after its kind. Y'all see it? Is it on the screen? And the tree yielded fruit whose seed was where? In itself. After his kind. And God saw that it was good. God created everything with and potential. My grandson sitting back there teaching. What we noticed about him and TJ is only two years old. But he is drawn toward music. He's drawn toward music. So the potential is already coming out in him. But it has to be developed. Let's see, get it. Get it. it has to be what TJ is back there. Hey, back there. Hey, 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 that potential has to be developed. So listen. So when mom and dad saw him sitting on grandma's lap, he was focused on everything Ella John was doing. So when he come to our house, TJ would come on the piano and get up on the piano and just. And he would do everything he got. <laughs> everything. He would, he would do it. Dave, remember right, baby? He would do everything. <laughs> and then he focused on Brother Dwayne. Yeah. 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 Got him some drumsticks. Beating on everything. Beating on everything. <laughs> but sitting on Grandma's lap, he saw it was drawn toward the music. Amen, amen. So then he picked up the shofar. Yeah. <laughs> With Brother Jose, he was drunk. But there in him lies the potential uh, that needs to be developed. That mom and dad has the responsibility to develop the potential that's in him. God sees you. And when he sees you, he sees you as a piece of work that needs to be developed. Yeah. So he works with you and builds you up in strength and in power and in grace and mercy yeah. that he can use you. Yeah. Oh. Woo. Glory to God. Let me take it. Let me take a little bit. Let me take a little bit. Look, 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 look. So everything, everything, everything. God created has potential. It placed the seed within itself. Now, now, everything that was and everything that is was in God. When we describe God, we say He is omnipotent. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yeah. We say He is omnipotent. Now, let me break that up for a minute. Okay, omni means always. Potent means full of power. So when you put it together, God is always full of power. Full of power. He has within him the potential for all that is, all that was, and all that will ever be. Yeah. Glory to God. Be, he said this before Abraham was. Jesus said, John 8 and 58. Before Abraham was, I am. I am. In other words, when 
he was saying, I was there. I was there. I was there. God created you. Now, I'm not saying that you're equal with God, but you have to understand that God created you to be omnipotent. Always full of power. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall come. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Acts 1 and 8 said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witness in Judea and Jerusalem and Samaria and to yeah, the other yeah. parts of the world. He given us power, y'all. Huh? Philippians 4 and 13 said, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then that lets me know that the ability that God has given me God has given me that I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious. I am and I shall prevail over all things because it's God's plan that I succeed. Listen to me, listen to me, y'all. 
because work, I'm sorry, finance produce what I say. Work produce purpose. Work produce purpose. Oh, let me go back and forth. Jesus said this, I must work the I must work the work of him that sent me. I must do purpose. I'm called to do purpose. You see, I'm satisfaction. That's why some of us change jobs all the time. Okay? Because we're not satisfied on that job. I should have stayed with my script. I should have stayed with my script. I'm messing up now. I should have stayed with my script. But see, when you enter something that brings you satisfaction, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, you don't mind getting up going to work in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? 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 You love it, you love it. I love this job. I love this job. Some of us only love it for three months. Come on, come on, come on. listen, listen. Listen, I'm going to get back on script in just a minute. But God called us to work the works of him that sent us. Yes, okay? And the works yes, is the will of the Father. Yes, the works is the will of the Father. The works is what God has called you to do. The works is coming out of darkness into the light. Yes. The work is laying hands on the sick and the sick shall be here. So I, I draw my satisfaction. I'm, I'm full when I'm preaching the word of God. Nothing, nothing. Because the anointing of God Rest upon me. Look, 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 look. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go a little bit further. Jesus, Jesus, y'all. Jesus had both purpose and potential. John 4 and 34. He said, This my meat, my satisfaction, my joy. When I get pleasure out of it is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John 6 and 38 said, If I came not. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the purpose of him that sent me. John, 1 John 3 and 8 said, He that committed, uh, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. His purpose is purpose. And his potential was seen in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recover of sight to the blind. He has set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Listen, let me tell you something. How you feel and what others say about you is not important. Look at somebody say, I don't care what you say about me. <laughs> well, you are who God says you are. He sees you more than you can imagine. Your potential is limited. Your potential is limited only by God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are, you are, you are. You are the image. You are the image of God. God sees. Follow me, follow me, y'all. God sees what men and women only look at. God knows your potential. Look, he looked in a manger, but he saw a king. He looked at the servant, and he saw a savior. He looked at the sacrifice, and he saw salvation. He looked at the crucifixion, but he saw resurrection. He looked at death and he saw life. He looked at defeat and he saw victory. Look, 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 look. Look at what God sees in you. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings, yeah. made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and forever. Listen, listen. God said, I raise you up to be kings. I raise you up to be queens and princes in my sight because you are somebody. Uh, you are the household of my father. So 
Therefore, you're created. You're created with purpose. You're created to work the work.
Remember what he said. That the son of man, the son of man, must suffer, be crucified, and die. But on the third day, he's getting up. We're celebrating. We're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. He got up. He got up. He got up. He got up. He got up, he got up. He got up for you. 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 So because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all my fears are gone. Because I know who holds my future. Hallelujah. And life is worth the living. Life is worth the living just because. Yeah. 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 Yeah.